Now, as always, a very beautiful hymn there, The Joy of Love, composed by Ephraim Feely uh, for the World Meeting of Families as our introductory hymn and signature tune, really, now for this morning's catechesis program here with Radio Maria Ireland. Father Eamon McCarthy is my name. And thanks to William coming in to join me today. I've got a camera in my face now today, so <laughs> double pressure now today. So lovely to any who will be looking on on this uh, segment of the catechesis that we put on video. You're more than welcome to Radio Maria and delighted to have your company with us visually as well here uh, in the studio. It's swelteringly hot outside. Thanks to God for air conditioning kicking in here. So I do hope the weather isn't adversely affecting, affecting you. I got a WhatsApp message there actually of <laughs> a picture of um, the, 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 a garden covered in snow and icicles coming down off the, 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 the sloping roof of the shed in the massive blizzard we had only months ago. <laughs> and just by, by way of a cool breeze today, just a reminder of what the weather was like only recently. <laughs> so keep, keep that in mind if the, if the weather's too hot for you. It's just extraordinary uh, heat wave we're having, 30 degrees, you know, without a bother in, in the west of Ireland, uh, where, where it, it rains forever, seemingly at times. <laughs> so amazing. So thanks for your company and again those joining us on video great to have you with us as well and again please do get in touch with this is a conversational mode chatechesis we call it so it's it's an exchange it's a dialogue it's about growing in faith and in formation yeah, human and spiritual and so it's all about a dialogue we we love to hear from you and just thanks a big shout out i can show this now on the, on the camera of a uh, mass card i received um, a couple of great friends of mine from a previous parish of mine in Fremont, well, actually Kanturk, I suppose, uh, Jara and Willie Noonan uh, send uh, all God's blessings, Holy Mass. Your intentions have been included in a triduum of Masses offered at the Shrine of Our Lady, Queen of Peace in Medjugorje uh, from Willie and Jara Noonan. So thanks uh, so much to Willie and Jara. Hope all is well with you and that the piano is going well. So I'm, I'm in her prayers, she says as well. And Jara, I mentioned earlier on, Jara Dean is her, her um, full name but known as Jared Jardim. She ran the choir, looked after the choir in Fremont there in North Cork, Mid Cork. And um, one of the days she was teaching the school, teaching piano to the, the, the boys and girls in the primary, local primary school. And of course I was the chairperson of the board and the local priest and the way you interact in schools. So I was in one day just sitting around the table as we do a lovely small country school, great atmosphere, lovely teachers, really excellent staff there. Uh, always uh, great camaraderie and plenty of drama. Anybody who works in a school knows about drama, that too. But that's part and parcel of, of, of uh, family life as we're learning through Morris Laetitia and studying the Pope's document there. But just one of the days I said to Jerry, you know, I've always wanted to learn the piano. Any chance I can sort of sit in her, you know, once you're finished with the pupils, can you, can you let me? And she said, yeah, sure, by all means. So she took me through from grade one to about grade five or so. And then I, I moved on from the parish and took it on another couple of grades. So she's just keeping an eye on me to make sure I'm still pushing it on to, to keep the music going. Great blessing. It was kind of one of those things on my to-do list that, uh, hey, you know, here's, here's one you can take off now a little bit anyway. Uh, so th nice to hear from Jura. And now a lovely text came in. And just Ulrika, who's one of our great allies and one great listeners and great associates here, a volunteer, if you like. Ulrika lives in Hildesheim. Uh, in Germany and has been listening to us here in Radio Maria since last July and a big fan altogether and is learning Irish. We have a little recording of Ulrika praying the Hail Mary in Irish so all you people out there I'm looking at the camera <laughs> get get your get your, your 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 shoes on there and start uh, brushing up your Irish. So she says Father thank you so much for the great joy listening once again to the beautiful chant of the Our Father in Irish. So as you know here on, on uh, Friday morning we celebrate the Mass, uh, Holy Mass in Irish, through Irish we have the Missal there. Now I'm learning myself, it's, I'm, I'm not accustomed to the, and, and doing it now on a regular basis, just the flow is coming a little bit better and I'm sure my pronunciation, I could do it corrections actually as well. Uh, but uh, I only sang, I'd say for the first time recently, the Orna Her Oria, the Sean Oria, the Orna Her Her So familiar to us I hope and to many people. And it is a lovely chant uh, and quite sort of famous here. So Ulrika wants to, wants to, to learn that too. And she signs off Gorev Mila Mahagat from a German listener now. Keep, keep that in mind, <laughs> all you viewers out there. <laughs> so just thanks to Ulrika so much. And another lovely text in here um, from an anonymous listener, but just hi. Loved listening to Ulrika's lovely voice. Now Ulrika, the, paying back the compliment here to you. 
and very inspiring words about asking God for what we need. Uh, and Ulrika very kindly on a Friday morning now has begun to join us and just reflecting on some of the listening she's been doing to Radio Maria in Germany, who, by the way, are our terrific allies and friends because without the listeners who um, contribute freely um, to the, the Radio Maria as a project uh, and, and in such great generosity, we would never have started here in Ireland and we couldn't possibly continue. We belong to the world family, you see, of Radio Maria and we rely on the listeners and it's divine providence, that's how it works here, that it, it's the listeners, it's your radio station, so if, if you want to help and participate, either volunteering, praying with us, praying for us, promoting or supporting us, but financially too, keep that in mind if you because everything that's contributed here goes into the, the, the work that goes on to make a radio station um, not for profit. We don't, we're not interested in profit. We're not interested in accumulating money. Um, we're not interested in, in massive salaries. I'm on a nice, simple, humble, less than curate salary here, just enough to keep me going, expenses really. Uh, so it's not a, it's n has nothing to do with accumulating anything in the way of wealth, or, but it's simply about the gospel. So everything that comes, this is your way now of being missionary by contributing here. And this goes out to the whole world. We have listeners, like I say, in Germany, all, all over the place and growing all the time. Uh, so thanks so much indeed, Ul Ulrike. Thanks so much from this listener. Very inspiring now, those words you shared with us from Father Philippe, who's part of the community of the Beatitudes. Some of you might have heard of them uh, in France. And he contributes uh, a regular slot on Radio Maria in Germany which they probably translate, I'm sure, and uh, share with their listeners. So Ulrika is just simply sharing it with us here too. So now, maybe a little item for, for a question or just to explore. Um, when does this asking for yourself, though, become selfish? Now Ulrika had brought up the, the lovely idea of um, humility and um, emptying ourselves really of pride, that pride is, is, is self I'm full of myself, you know that idea, we're speaking about that. But humility demands an emptying of self so that I can be free to receive the blessings God wants to give me and to share them with others. But this is a very good qu question. When does this asking then for yourself become selfish? Well, I, that's, that's, that's worth exploring. I, I, my instant sort of response or I, idea in response to that is that if, if I'm asking just for me, fix my problems, you know, address my issues solely for me, which I suppose we're inclined to do, <laughs> you know, make things better for me, that, that my will be done rather than God's will be done. Maybe that's when it starts to become selfish. Do it my way. I did it my I had that at a funeral, believe it or not, Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. And I'm sure the Lord was smiling, saying, well, sorry. <laughs> that's not how it's done. So. Frank Sinatra, that's maybe when it becomes selfish. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, good, hey look, uh, I just read that there, what, what about forget about me in family? Yeah, I played that song, thanks for reminding me of that actually, this text message. <laughs> um, Father Stan Fortuna, Franciscan friar of the Renewal, check him out, he does rap music, he's in New York, they're, they're real up-to-date guys. But he has a song f called Family, F-A-M-I-L-Y, forget about me, I love you, an acronym, very clever. And you, you just reminded me of that there, that's good. <laughs> so uh, the texture says, would love to hear more from Ulrika on forgiveness. So now Ulrika, putting it up to you, like I said, indeed, I am very grateful to you myself because you gave me some understanding and words to help me address that. It's, it's a regular concern of people. Um, I remember a parishioner said it to me once, you know, Father, you preach a lot about getting forgiveness of sins and confession and getting God's mercy. But how do I go about forgiving myself? You know, whatever hurts I've had. And Ulrika touched on it very nicely, I thought this morning, that humility means accepting that I am loved by God and that God loves me. And it helps me on the path to what she calls self-reconciliation. You know, sort of accepting that, okay, I, I've made a mess of things, I've had terrible experiences, I've been hurt or wounded. But in spite of all of that, even still, I, I'm willing to accept that uh, God still loves me, and God cares for me and forgives me. And that's a path to humility. Pr 
Christ kind of says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond forgiveness. I'm, I'm, who am I? A kind of a false humility. Um, so that, that's a kind of a beginning towards that conversation. Do please text me again and get in touch. 089-467-2000 is the text number. Again, this is a chat thesis. It's I'm not saying I have all the answers. The Church has and the Lord has all the Holy Spirit in the end. Um, text me and, and further the conversation. Email info at radiomaria.ie and um, the telephone for the business line is 014-123-456. And of course, you can always write and visit us here at the studio to St. Anthony's Business Park, Ballymont Road, Dublin 22. So uh, Texter says, we'd love to hear more from Ulrika on forgiveness. Uh, when is Ulrika starting her own show on Radio Maria Ireland? And it just concludes uh, with the no name, but struggling faith listener. There you go, Ulrika. Uh, great text. Thanks for that. Well done. And great encouragement for you, Ulrika, to keep on that path. And there you go, when you're starting your own show. And, and this is exactly what I've been talking about and will continue to invite you if you'd like to have, you know, have your own show, so to speak, or just become involved in the conversation. We can do this on air as well. We have a number there that we can connect you and you can ask me the question directly live and we can, we can start talking and hopefully, you see, I, I can kind of preach till the cows come home and I can do that on a Sunday, but this is such a great blessing here because now you can ask me and you can tell me what it is you will need to help you on your journey of faith. And you too can help others on their journey of faith because you can call in, text in like, like this and share some of your story and your journey and you'll actually help others. You can be bear witness to the movement of the Spirit in your own life that you'll be probably addressing the very things that other people are struggling with too. And, and in that, that burden shared is, is a burden lightened, you know, the problem is, is, the, is alleviated and, and, and lightened up so much the more, you know. That's what it's there for. So good. Um, let's take a pause, uh, as I, I like to do, a couple of pauses through this hour, just for a little bit of music. And always on, uh, on a Friday, we like to just have a little bit of Irish. And now I've got a video camera in front of me as well. Massive shout out for, this is my favorite, really. I'm, I'm totally biased. But Rona McDonough, uh, Foam Lee, this actually goes back to the 1990s, I think, this CD. It's called Ancient Promise. And Foam Lee are the choir that sing in Clarendon Street in Dublin on the Sunday morning mass at 11 when I used to live there for a time. Uh, perhaps they still do, but Ronan is still on the circuit, I know. Genius, a fabulous composer, I must say. So Ancient Promise is the name of the CD. And the first track, Oscailga Irium Suas Ledia, which translates literally as I, I Rise with God. There, Irem Suos Ledia is the uh, beautiful track, the first track on this CD, Ancient Promise by Fuam Lee, uh, liturgical music rooted in the Irish tradition by Ronan McDonough. Absolutely fabulous. Just a little shout out for Kieran Cole as well, who's continuing as the PRO of the Irish Church Music Association. Uh, we had him on air with us yesterday. Listen back, the, that'll be up as a podcast on our website. A lovely chat we had with Kieran. He's the choir director for Our Lady of Victory's Gospel Choir. And this is their new CD, which I'm showing to the camera. It's called One Love. And it's gospel music, very different from Irish uh, triad or Irish <laughs> traditional liturgical music. Um, but uh, lovely again, great, another genre and just great talent. And, and on the back of the CD, the back of the picture here, you see a big uh, group of 20 or 30 singers too. I'll play a track from that a bit later. But this is, this is the great wealth we have of music here in Ireland. And I said to Kieran, look, let them know at the Church Music Association Summer School, which is on this week in Maynooth, that we've got Radio Maria here and, and we're just dying to, to meet you and, and, and come on in, share, share the, the moment, share your gifts, share your talents. Again, the very same dynamic, right, that's going on, that we want you to be part of this growth and this journey and this movement in faith. 
So that's what's great to have William here now doing the, the camera work. You can, you can get some of my enthusiasm here. Come on in and, and this is yours. It's your radio station. I'm here at your service. And the, the more we, we can have this interaction, the more this can grow. And the world family, our friends uh, in, in the world, the 78 radio stations of Radio Maria started about 35, 40 years ago. It's quite new. Uh, certainly brand new here in Ireland, only three years young. So we're still toddlers, we're still figuring it out. But um, it's just taking off. Um, I was looking actually last night, I was getting in to put it up on our Facebook page uh, and YouTube and, and Instagram too, that they've uh, just this year uh, inaugurated a new, um, what's the word? I will, a head, not a headquarters, but a, a studio and a, and a center in Central Africa, in Rwanda. And they, to celebrate it, right, they, they had a celebration in a stadium and something like 15,000 people turned up for the launch of Radio Maria in Rwanda. 15,000 people. Well, I don't know how many bishops and priests and just, it was phenomenal. The pictures are there to prove it. It is huge in Africa. And so the world family on the strength of that are so delighted that we're up and running and starting to move forward a bit more in Ireland because as an English speaking radio station, we, we have that universal reach through the English language, you see. And we know that from our listenership that people are listening in from at least 70 different countries. And if nothing else, to learn maybe a little English or what, maybe to tune into the life of the church. And on the strength, of course, of many Irish missionaries who've traveled the world over and that good influence has spread all over. And it's a real good news opportunity and again, a tremendous way of sharing the internationality, the universality of the church, St. Peter and St. Paul, the feast day today. Um, this is our gift and our moment, our opportunity, and a blessing from the Lord and a gift from Our Lady. So you are part of this journey. Come on in and make it yours and share and, and help us grow. So St. Peter and St. Paul today, just a little, uh, here's something else we do. And again, it's great to be able to show these things to the camera. This, this is kind of how it's done on a radio station. Uh, <laughs> you see this on TV as well. They hide it a little bit from you for cosmetic reasons. We don't do cosmetics here. There's, there's, there's no makeup here. It's the real, <laughs> it's the real deal. <laughs> Um, but just from the Vatican website there, the Feast of St. Peter and Paul, uh, just a, a message there uh, from the Pope that you cannot separate Christ's glory from his cross. That was very strong focus in the readings today for Holy Mass for St. Peter and St. Paul. Red vestments, they both martyred for the faith. In fact, the very first paragraph of the Acts of the Apostles, King Herod was, was, was you know, all out to, to crush and kill the church and he beheaded James. That line just hit me this morning for some reason because maybe I've always passed that by. So remember the three apostles, Peter, James, and John? The three, the, so they were with Jesus on the mountain for the transfiguration. They were the three apostles who accompanied Jesus for the, um, really the resurrection, I suppose, or the bringing back from the dead of the, the uh, Jairus' daughter. Remember that, he brought them in with them. She, the girl is asleep, Talitha Kum. It's the image actually on the left-hand side of the World Meeting of Families icon, if you've seen that beautiful image by um, Mihai Kuku, who incidentally, I might add, that's a podcast on our website, came to the studio during the week and gave us the full rundown of his artistic work as a Romanian involved uh, you know, uh, in the Orthodox tradition and helping us to understand the place of iconography in the church and explaining the beautiful image there that he wrote. You, you don't paint an icon. You write it and you kind of pray it into, into being. Uh, anyway, the scene on the left is that Jairus' daughter and Peter and James and John are there. Uh, so these apostles are foremost in the early church. Peter the rock on which I will build my church. Paul the apostle to the Gentiles. And James, ahead of the Council of Jerusalem. Remember in St. Paul's letters, Galatians, Romans there. He heads off to Jerusalem to kind of figure out his calling and to see that, yes, to be affirmed in his role as apostle to the Gentiles. And it's James and Peter and John who, whom he confers with principally, as well as the other apostles at the Council of Jerusalem, as it's called. So that's why it kind of hit me this morning, just reading the Acts of the Apostles. It's just one line, Herod, he beheaded James, sort of a, a end of conversation, James. And Peter in prison, thinking, oh, you know, I'm next. This is, words, this is all out persecution. And the angel comes, and we've been talking, I'm just going to come to our angels, we've been talking about them. No bother to them, angels. They, they, they're spiritual beings, vastly superior and powerful to us in the spiritual realm, total autonomy over, over all things material. 
you know, walks into the prison, just he doesn't have to walk in even, appears in the prison, delivers Peter from his chains, brings him out, off you go. That the Lord was guarding and guiding the early church, and Peter is like realizing this isn't a dream, <laughs> this is for real. And in the end, of course, journeying to Rome and with St. Paul, both witnessing to the faith and hence, as it were, replacing Romulus and Remus, you know, Roman history of, of the founders of Rome, and the empire, of course, falling in on itself. In time, all empires come and go. All dictatorships, all tyrannies, history tells they come, they go. The church remains the same. And that was the gospel reading today. The gates of hell cannot prevail, will not prevail against the church, no matter what the persecution. Now, we're seeing a certain amount of it here in Ireland today. There's, there's a kind of a nastiness about it too which is very unpleasant, and it's completely unnecessary, of course. We're, we're, we're not the enemy here. We're not, you know, <laughs> what, what harm are we allegedly doing, except prodding people's consciences, maybe, to truth. The truth sets free, and the darkness cannot ever overcome the light. And I made this point at Mass, and I made it here before, very important that in the defensive terms that, that the gates of hell or the world can try to prevail and crush the church out of existence, as it has done in Ireland. We celebrated the Irish martyrs just last week, and, and we've seen how many Irish martyrs were men and women, young and old, religious and lay people, suffered so much for the faith through the 1500s, 1600s. Um, and the churches came back alive and well. We had a second wave of missionary endeavor from the blood of the martyrs. So if we're persecuted today, it's nothing new. It's the Lord kind of promised that. That's what the Pope is saying that you can't separate Christ's glory from the cross. The two are that sort of suffering, take up your cross every day, is an integral part of the journey. It's the challenge of faith that, that we all face. Again, that's why it's great to be able to talk about it here freely with you, to share our, the faith perspective on this, uh, and then to accompany one another, as I'm inviting you to do. Um, so James beheaded, it seems like kind of a very abrupt and sudden end, but fulfilling the Lord's promise. Remember the Lord said to James and John, can you drink of the chalice that I shall drink? And the lads, of course, yeah, we can, not having a notion of what lay ahead. But in fairness, empowered by the Holy Spirit, James, James beheaded. John, of course, heading to Ephesus traditionally with our Blessed Lady, uh, in uh, keeping custody of her. And from where our assumption took place, uh, I'll do some research on, on that side of things. We might come to that August 15th and explore that topic a little more. But Peter and, and Paul facing the, the, the wrath of Rome. Uh, and yet, empire came and went. But just that other aspect, the, the flip side of, of persecution, that on the offensive, yes, on the defensive, nothing can crush the church. But when we are go on the offensive, not in a sense of m militant, sort of um, strict military sense, but, you know, in, in the war against the world, the flesh, and the devil, preaching the truth with love, you see, that's, I mean, not a kind of militant sense, but in, in inviting people to love. When you go on the offensive, the light of truth, that the darkness cannot prevail against it. So the beautiful truth of the sanctity of life in the womb, as the church, church's constant teaching, that can't stand, you know, the, 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 the culture of death, that you have a right to choose. That's false. You know, it's patently, you know, in, there's, a, there's a sort of a grain of truth in it that seems to be attractive. Sure, we all want to have choice, but the light of the truth that the choice for life, you see, just overcomes the sort of the darkness of the error that's intertwined with the, the, the culture of choice, you know. Uh, that's what I mean on the offensive, w without being oppressive or trying to win an argument, very important too. Uh, the light of truth sets us free, you see. So th there's the Pope echoing that for us on the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. Watching my time and, and just want to keep my little conversation going. Again, can I just throw it open to you? And again, if you're watching this on, on video, this is the constant plea. The text message 089-467-2000. The office number 014-123-456. Email info at radiomaya.ie. Come visit us. Write to us, St. Anthony's Business Park, Ballymount Road, Dublin 22. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Like, click on the like thing because that increases the popularity and its presence in Google. 
share it with, with others um, and follow. You know, the way you can click and you can follow us so that you'll get the latest. So, so these ones I'm holding up for the camera now, the um, text of the news items that we, we draw from the Vatican website and the Irish Catholic Bishops Conference website, we put on, on our own links on our own Facebook and uh, website too. And any photographs that's of what's going on here in the studio, we put up on Instagram that you can just check out visually what's, what's going on. You'll see for yesterday, uh, Fiona, who came to visit um, Father Brett, um, worth checking out actually, a newly ordained priest, and he looks like he just walked straight out of a Hollywood set, you know, kind of chiseled face and really neat haircut and sort of Bing Crosby or <laughs> he's, he's, he's sort of ready-made, sort of fresh off the, <laughs> the, the conveyor belt as, as newly ordained priest. Lovely fellow, fine, fine young man. Do you know he told us that there's five new, there were five ordinations for his one diocese in Ohio. Um, five of them. And 40 young men preparing for ordination in the seminary for one diocese in Ohio. And I put that question to him, I said, you know, that we hear that in, in the church in the States. They are, they're thriving in certain parts with vocations, bursting at the seams. I know Arlington Diocese, my sister lives there. An incredible, 48, you, you can walk into the sacristy, a big poster on the wall, 48 young men, again, they all look like movie stars, they're all dressed in their finery and all well-groomed and youthful and, and I feel old, you know. Uh, I, I'm kind of the token young priest in Ireland, it's very funny, <laughs> being in my 50s, you know, because all the, the, the older generation of priests tend to be further along without being too, and I tend to be the token young priest, you know, because it's so relatively. Um, now saying that, uh, you know, to be fair, Father Tony McAleese was on the radio with us, Father Tony's up and down, and Connor, newly ordained just within the last number of weeks. And I think he's going to come and visit us here in the studio too, please God. And Father Martin Shannon, who was a married man, uh, obviously on in years a little bit now, but ordained just recently for the Diocese of, of, of Killaloo, living in Clare, and was involved in the permanent diaconate and transitioned uh, to the priesthood. His wife passed away, sadly, a few years back. Um, so no, there are vocations still coming through. But when you see these young guys coming in, it's like, hey, <laughs> I can hang up the boots here now, I can move on. Uh, but it's very encouraging and very affirming. And these are the very things, right, that we're not hearing enough about, I don't think. But you will hear it here on Radio Maria. Stay tuned and get involved, <laughs> get involved. Now all my books in front of me here. Here's the book I'm going to show to the camera that we've been using for the last few months. Uh, Peter Kreeft is, is the author, a terrific philosopher, powerful speaker, and uh, teaches uh, philosophy uh, to third level students and has a great kind of rapport and a great link and a great way of expressing himself and connecting and challenging their thinking. So this is a book, it's called uh, Angels and Demons in brackets. Uh, what do we really know about them? Ignatius Press. Uh, published back in the 90s, uh, but it's got a hundred questions in anything and everything you wanted to ask or wanted to know about angels and demons. And it's teaching us an awful lot about ourselves and our own spiritual journey and our own place in the order of creation too. And every time an angel comes up in sacred scripture, I, I kind of stop and think a bit more now, like this morning's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the angel who delivered Peter from prison, like, not a bother on him. It's, it's the angels are there at that level. Peter wasn't kind of sure, was this a dream or not? So the, the angel, you know, doing his job, very simply and to the point, no messing, no excess words, no idle chat <laughs> or conversation. Get in, get out, give his message, you're free, move on. You know, that's, that's where, that's teaching us something about the mystery, but the uh, amazing fact of, of angels as, as those spiritual beings in the invisible world between us as the highest order of the visible creation and God as the author of all. And again, angels finite because they had a beginning, but powerful beyond all the superheroes you can see on TV and movies and imagine, you know, all these demigods that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, Thanos is the latest demigod. Uh, who's the bad guy in, in an Avengers movie that's out, I haven't seen it, but um, he's this sort of powerful urge and he's got a big glove on and all these powerful rings and blah, blah. <laughs> but Thanos actually, and thanks to Ulrika just 
followed up because I, I was, that Greek word was in my head, Thanatos, which is actually the Greek word for death. And there was a god named Thanatos who was the, the god of death, if you like, the, not an angel of death, but a god, a demiurge of death. And I think that's the theme of the movie in The Avengers, that all the good superheroes are being overcome by this evil superhero or whatever. But even with, right, what I'm, my point is, <laughs> you know, all that Hollywood stuff, we have, we're, we're looking for something there by way of a superpower, if you know what I mean. And the best we can express it is in terms of human powers, let's say. Um, angels are far, 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 far beyond all of that. Just a gazillion, million, billion miles beyond all of that stuff. So it's useful, the Hollywood side of things, if it's a kind of a stepping stone, it teaches us that, yeah, we're, we're looking for something beyond kind of eternal life, great strength, great wisdom, great power, great uh, authority, etc. Uh, and we see it wielded through these superheroes, kind of mythical figures. That's it's an ancient thing, really. But angels now, and as we're learning here, look, these things just pale away and uh, put them all together, and they don't even come, just, they don't scratch the surface of the lowest angel. That's, that's where we're at with angels. So again, and, and that's important too, because, and I've tried to do that from the outset, to sort of dismiss a little bit this kind of woolly, cuddly, feel-goody stuff to do with angelology. Um, you know, they, they, they love us and they, 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 <laughs> they respect us, but they're not kind of cute and cuddly, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, I don't want to <laughs> take too much away from that because, yes, they're our friends, sure, uh, but they're amazing beings and they, they're totally on our side, the good angels. And that gives us a sense then of the battle that's going on, epic, cosmic battle between good and evil. Uh, good and Because and, we'll come to the demons shortly and he doesn't mince his, his words here. Now, let me just give one question. That's about all I have time for here. Question 75, or three-quarters of the way through the book here. Uh, can I expect ever to be rescued by an angel? Now, remember, <laughs> remember he asked that question about, um, you know, will the angels like to stop the speeding car or whatever? And I told you about the story, the, the guardian angel, the plastic one, apparently you can buy, and you're, and you're putting your car on the dashboard, and if you go over the speed limit, the little voice comes out, you're on your own now, <laughs> you're on your own now. <laughs> um, so if we do stupid things, right, if we jump off a cliff and expect an angel to rescue us, well, good luck with your hopes and dreams because that's, that's false, whatever that is, false trust. It's, it's presumption. It's a bad plan. Uh, so his answer is, right, the, here's the question. Can I, I expect ever to be rescued by an angel? Now, Peter, okay, this morning was rescued by an angel. But here's Kreef's answer. No. All right? <laughs> Angel rescues are rare, like all supernatural interventions. So in the scriptures, it happens. Paul, again, in prison, delivered from prison by an angel. It's, it's rare. It's not, it's not everybody who can expect to be saved by an angel. Because, you know, the supernatural interventions, God respects free will, you see. He respects freedom. You might experience it, okay? He's not ruling it out completely, but you shouldn't expect it. It's an important qualification, and he's right. It's like a government agency that really works. How is that, that? It's like a government agency that really works. I suppose they do their job. Yeah, he might come back to that. I, I, I think about that a little bit. Moreover, he goes on, angels don't rescue people who deliberately do foolish things. That principle is taught both by the current angel stories and by Scripture. In Math Matthew's Gospel, for instance, Satan tempted Jesus to throw himself down from the top of the temple like a ball for angels to catch. Yeah, so the devil would tempt you in that way as he tempted Jesus. And what was Jesus' answer? You know, be gone, Satan. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. There was a movie, Wings of Desire, I've heard of it, I don't think I've seen that movie, that turned this principle upside down. In this movie, an angel told the hero to do just what the devil tempted Jesus to do to jump. Hollywood seems to love to make anti-biblical movies today. Well, that's the truth there. For instance, in the angel movie, Defending Your Life, never heard of that one, the hero could go to heaven only yay, if he had the courage to commit adultery. The religion of Hollywood. Yeah, dead on there. <laughs> that's, that's just perverse. That's, that's bizarre. That's weird. 
um, yeah, that you're, you, know, you go ahead and do moral evil and, and you expect to be pulled out of the mud. You know, if, if you, and, and this is the advice I give, and we'll come to this too, about demons. That if, if you, the devil is like a dog on a leash. If you walk inside the range of the, an angry dog on a leash, and don't blame me if you get bitten by the dog or attacked by the dog, how stupid is that? Uh, so the very same, you don't put the Lord your God to the test. That's a dumb idea. It's a dumb practice. It's, it's grave foolishness. We've been given all the intellect and capacity and understanding to discern the truth and live by the truth. Don't mess with it, you know what I mean? It's, it's, so obviously Hollywood, yeah, <laughs> God between us and all harm. No, they, there's some good stuff. No, we, we mustn't be, uh, because it's, there's, there's good material that comes through. Drama teaches us a, a lot of things that you can uh, make inferences from. I'm going to pause for a little piece of music. I always like to get a little bit of a Morris Letizia in before the end of the show as well. Again, you're welcome to join in the conversation. Uh, I'll just check there's a text message or messages come in there. I'll just check them as well. So I'm going to uh, share with you now Our Lady of Victory's Gospel Choir. This is Kieran Cole now, the director. It's uh, the choir that on a Saturday vigil mass in Our Lady of Victory's Church in Ballymun, if you're in Dublin, uh, they sing. They're on holidays for the summer. They'll be back again, I think, in August, September. But this track is called, uh, and appropriately, Beautiful Day. Now that's Our Lady Victory's uh, choir there, One Love, the first track, Beautiful Day. Apologies for the, the beginning there. We went to a bit of chant music and there was some glitch with the, uh, the CD or, or some such thing. So sorry about that, the first minute or two was... But this is, we've oh, sometimes called it here, glitch radio. It's the humanity of the, of, the, of the system. And I like it actually, believe it or not. I like when things go wrong to a certain extent. <laughs> it can be stressful too. But it proves the point, look, we're not here as a professional outfit. We're not a polished, um, what's the word, you know, perfect consumer product. This is, is human. This is family. You know, children spill the milk every now and again. So what? <laughs> Uh, so this is so feel free and like if, if you want to join us on air and you're kind of prevented from doing it because oh, it's the radio and what will they say and how what will I say what will people think forget it don't worry about it that's ego don't, don't worry. just come in and join with us pray with us talk to us if you spill the milk we've done it a thousand times before you so <laughs> just do it so Ulrika just coming back to that texter earlier on she said she'd love to prefer a, a few more thoughts on this topic of reconciliation and kind of self-forgiveness um, and kind of knowing, you know, um, in asking for God's graces from God, when, when is the boundary as to when it's selfish or self-centered or not. We're going to continue that conversation, I'm sure, with Ulrika as time goes on, but uh, she says no, not, she's not going to take on a show <laughs> at the moment. In fact, uh, Ulrika, coming as far as she has, I mean, she said this was on air herself, um, she had, had, from the beginning, had never any intention, even didn't imagine she would come live on air. She was one of those persons, maybe like you, who, who, who just terrified at the prospect or just nervous at the prospect of coming on the radio and now is quite comfortable and happy to do so. And she considers that to be a miracle of grace. There you go. So that miracle is waiting for you to come on and, and join us as well. And another text message in here, and thanks so much for that. It's always lovely to get the reaction from listeners. Um, and we've touched in on this one before. Time doesn't quite permit. Oh, look at the time already. Uh, Father Eamon, the last few weeks after the referendum have been very hard on many people who prayed, supported, uh, and canvassed for life in Ireland. Amen. We, we, we're on the same journey with all of that. We're praying the house down here on, on Radio Maria as well. Where should we turn to next to direct our efforts? Uh, well, we, we could do worse uh, than certainly continuing the prayer and continuing your involvement in whatever pro-life organizations. There are there's so many of them. Uh, and you could do worse than coming and joining us on Radio Maria. Can I just throw that back in <laughs> and, and share with us in the journey? Because this, th this to me, right, uh, we, we don't go out to canvas or, or, or um, 
we're not militantly or we're not a crusade or, or if whatever the word is we're here to share the gospel of life the joy of the gospel and in doing that you actually cover the full panoply of issues because they all come up from time to time and we learn about them and discuss them and chat about them in the light of faith and if you can share radio maria with others get them to tune in and listen in they can pray with us and for us but they can begin to form their minds and hearts in the way of faith and address these very crucial issues and allow the Holy Spirit to guide the way forward. I, I, so that would be my short answer to that. We have been chatting about this certainly uh, on and off over the last while. So do please stay tuned in and do, do keep that conversation going. Thanks so much for, for that text. Um, <laughs> lay off knocking my cuddly angel, please. <laughs> I think I know who that's from. <laughs> yeah, I have been criticized for being overly uh, male in my, my approach to the angels. <laughs> that, shit, that this particular lady uh, likes cute and cuddly angels. Sorry, apologies. <laughs> what can I say? Look, they're angels. Um, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And, and uh, <laughs> Uh, hold on to that image certainly but don't let go of what's what Peter Kreeft is teaching us as well I think let's let's work together on this please <laughs> thanks for that text very good um, I'm kind of losing track here I've only got two minutes left this is this is always the way on radio we kind of run out of time everything goes too quickly the video that William is kindly taking somebody's asking there as well uh, isn't live uh, this is uh, this is the Holy Spirit really working the Holy Spirit encouraged William to come in and, and lend us his talents and gifts. So uh, William, we're going to take this away and do a bit of work on it and see what you might pull it apart and, and uh, upload uh, it at a later point. So it's a kind of a trial run and, and William's great. He has the technology and the know-how and is very kindly offered to come and help us out. We, it's something we've been meaning to do for so long is to have a video dimension to the work we're doing here because it's just the nature of the beast that, that you, 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 it's, you, you can need to have both now to draw more listeners in because we really want to reach out not just to good and loyal and faithful Catholics but to everybody. This is a good news story for, for the world. So, and in posting videos online, it's just another way, another medium to use all this, this technology to the good to, to reach more souls really for the Lord. Uh, so thank you, William, behind the camera. <laughs> and it'll be up. Please, God, we'll pray the Holy Spirit gives William all the, the right <laughs> uh, direction to, to bring it to fruition, you know. Ah, oh, 20 seconds. Look, I'll show you the, to the camera. Morris Letizia, sorry, Pope Francis is going to have to wait till, till next week. <laughs> sorry about that. Our time is up. So thank you so much for joining us, especially those who are watching on video. Uh, we're, we're very grateful to you for your company and your support. And great to get those messages in. Keep them rolling in. Don't stop. Uh, and uh, if I'm stepping over the line, uh, let me know. I'm, I'm not putting myself up as an expert in any direction. And thank you for sharing that. It's great to have a little conversation via text message and email there. So we'll pause now. It's just 12 o'clock. We'll pause and we'll pray together our Angelus and our midday prayer. And we'll continue our study and spiritual reading of St. Louis Marie de Montfort's uh, Secret of the Rosary as well as our, our lunchtime brief spiritual reading and conversation there. <laughs> 